All right, guys, today I had the car all packed up, and uh, I was heading out to go give this guy a flight. This is the uh, SlimFast 6-inch long-range build that I've been working on uh, the last couple weeks. Um, and the plan was to go out and test all of these props out with the same uh, size battery, fully charged, and see which one gives me uh, the longest flight times. Um, so I got everything all charged up, and I jumped in the car to head out, and on my drive to the field, it started raining. So I wasn't able to do that test, but rather than scrapping the whole thing, I decided I could still um, give this a test in a less than ideal way, but it still is going to give me a decent idea of what, at least on the low end, which prop is going to give me the best, uh, the longest flight time. So basically, um, I came home and I just did test hovers uh, here in the house, um, just kind of giving it, blipping the throttle up and down, uh, changing elevation, so that I was pulling a decent uh, amount of amps, so it wasn't just like on the very low end. So I did that for all of these propellers. I'm gonna run through what each one of these is. So we'll start with the, the five inch stuff. So this is the Dow Cyclone 5045C uh, prop that is five inch. And then the other five inch I tested was the HQV1S. This is the 5043 uh, PC prop. Moving on to the six inch props, we'll start with this uh, bi-blade here. This is the Gym Fan 6042 six inch bi-blade. We've got the Dal Cyclone 6045 tri blade. Got the Racecraft 6032 TCS tri blade. I don't even know if they make this guy anymore. This is the Dal 6045 tri blade. And then, last but not least, uh, this is kind of the weirdest of all the props that I tested. Um, this is the Lumineer 6x5x3 gate breaker prop. Um, as you can see, it's kind of a really awkward design. Uh, one thing that did cause me a lot of trouble is that I couldn't get any of my prop nut tools to actually be able to bite the nut because of it was clipping the outside of the uh, the prop here. So even using like this guy or my regular prop nut tools, what ended up happening is I ended up just like mangling the top of the nut. Uh, it's a cool design, but if it's going to be a pain in the ass getting the props the props on and off, uh, I don't know if I'd actually use this prop uh, going forward. All right, as for um, the weight of this guy, so I left it just like this for the test. I didn't want, I actually wanted it to be a little bit heavier so it would run down the battery faster so I wouldn't be sitting here uh, waiting for it to get down to uh, 15 volts. So with the Tattoo 1550 um, thrown on there, it's coming in about 620 grams, you know, throw in a few more grams for the propellers, but otherwise uh, this is how you see it. This is how it was flown for all these tests. They were all the exact same. And again, just to remind you, the way that the test was run, uh, I basically strapped a new battery on and then uh, took off and I just kind of hovered for a bit. And then I would kind of like uh, blip the throttle and get to the ceiling over and over again. And I basically just repeated that until um, the battery was pretty well sitting at 14.9 uh, volts. If it blipped to that, I didn't stop the test. I waited until it was kind of resting at 14.9 as I hovered there. And uh, then I landed and I took all these readings um, so it gives you an idea of like exactly how I was running the test. It's definitely um, flawed in the sense that you're not going to get these same flight times if you're out there cruising, uh, because as you go forward, you're going to use more energy than just hovering. So um, I just basically use this as a baseline uh, test for all the props, so they're all tested the same way, and then I'm comparing the flight times uh, in that in that uh, environment. And the motors that we're using in this test uh, on this quad here are the. Uh, the Hyperlite 2207-1922 Long Range Edition motors. These are supposed to be good, efficient uh, motors. They should have no problem swinging, uh, you know, five and, five and six inch props on both uh, four and five S batteries. For the batteries in this test, um, for all of these, I was using brand new uh, R-Line uh, 2.0s. These are the 1550s uh, from Tattoo. Um, so each battery exactly the same, uh, ch charge up to the exact same voltage. Um, all the same quality batteries, no, no old ones, so you, I think the readings across all the tests are, are going to be pretty comparable. Alright guys, so the way that I did this was, um, like I said, I charged all the batteries up. Some of them started a little lower than others, but I accounted for that. So I took the starting voltage here, um, and then I flew them all until they reached um, a, like a, a solid 14.9 volts um, during hover. And then I immediately recharged all the batteries. Then I took a reading of the milliamps put back into the batteries. And this was because, um, you know, for instance, this one uh, here uh, in, they used 1,005 milliamps, 
which of course is going to get a longer flight time, um, and I wanted to account for that. So I basically took uh, a reading of all the milliamps that were used during that flight, along with the flight time, and I normalized that time uh, based on the the, the, the highest highest milliamps drawn. So basically, these are all pulled up to as if they had used 1,005 milliamps. So of course, the first one doesn't change, and the rest of these should all be pulled up accordingly based on the difference between 884 and 1,005. All right, so. Uh, and then I just uh, converted those times back to minutes and seconds since they were in these decimal format. All right, so the first one, I, I left it alone, nine minutes and eight seconds. Um, the second prop, uh, the next best, was eight minutes and 47 seconds, then eight minutes and 21 seconds, seven minutes and 35 seconds, seven minutes and 29 seconds, seven minutes and 16 seconds, and then at the bottom we've got a six minute and 13 second run. So do me a favor, go down uh, in the comments and leave a comment uh, with, with what your guess is for the order of these. So I'll list the props on screen and then uh, I want you to tell me which ones you think fell in which order and then I'll show you the results. So take the time to vote now. All right, and here are my votes uh, before I ran the test. All right guys, the winning prop was the Lumineer 6053 Gatebreaker. It came in at nine minutes and eight seconds of hover time. Uh, this one really surprised me because the prop itself has an insane amount of pitch at the hub, and it just seemed like one of those props that was gonna be just like a, a battery sucker, um, providing tons of thrust, uh, but very little flight time. And that's just not what it did. It came out very, very well. This was the most surprising of all the props to me. Um, but the one thing about this prop, as I mentioned earlier, is that uh, because of the weird design and how pitched it is at the hub, um, you end up uh, having a hard time getting the prop nut on because most tools you might have, like a little prop nut or um, a socket, won't actually fit over the nut without running into the sides of the prop. Um, so if, if I can't find a tool that works for this or can, if I can't craft one <clears throat> by grinding something down, I don't know that I'll use this prop because I'm just going to be shredding my nuts uh, putting this on and off. Um, so that's just something to realize um, before you order these. Uh, in second place, we have the Gym Fan 6042. Um, this one didn't surprise me at all. This is a biblade. I've always associated biblades with efficiency. If you look at any of those, he those heavy lift um, camera rigs, they all sport massive biblade props. Um, so this, this is where uh, I think I voted this as first. It came in second, um, but I knew it would be at the, towards the top of the list. The next one up is the Dow Cyclone 6040C at 8 minutes and 21 seconds. This actually really surprised me. Um, the Dow Cyclones that I've used before, like 5045C, um, on my five inch Briggs. I never thought of it as an efficient prop. I always thought it was a very thrusty prop, great in the corners with a lot of bite, but I never associated it with uh, endurance. And so to see this on here um, as the 6040C, uh, to see it so high on the list was actually really surprising to me. I had put the Cyclone in fourth place, um, but it ended up surprising me. Uh, the next one down was actually a pretty substantial jump from 821 to 735 is the Racecraft 6032 TCS Tri-Blade. Um, this was surprisingly low for me. I had voted this one uh, to be in second place. That's where I thought it was gonna be. And uh, being fourth, man, it's just a surprise. It's just a, it's a Tri-Blade six inch prop with very low pitch and an interesting design. It's got like really pointy tips on it. And it just seemed like to me it was gonna be a really efficient prop. But uh, in the end, man, it just came in way lower than I expected. I think because of the lack of prop, um, I had to actually apply more throttle to achieve hover, and I think in the end this just uh, used up a lot more milliamps than uh, some of these other props did. All right, in fifth place, uh, this one was a big surprise to me. This is the the five inch cyclone. This is pretty much the prop I used last season for racing on my five inch uh, quads, and uh, again I never thought of it thought of it as an efficient prop, but uh, it looks like it actually doesn't do too bad uh, coming in at seven minutes and twenty nine seconds. I expected the gap between this and the, uh, the racecraft to be much, much larger, but it's really not that big of a difference. The next prop is the HQ Prop V1S. I did put it in set, uh, sixth place, um, but I didn't expect it to be beaten by the Cyclone or beat out the, uh, the Dow 6045 Tri. Overall, not great. I don't think I'll be using this prop. Um, it has a really, really terrible low end thrust, and so I found myself a lot of times getting ready to hit the ground. Uh, more than more than I would have with some of the other props. And then in last place, uh, this one didn't surprise me too much, is the Dow 6045 Tri-Blade. This is an older 
uh, prop. I don't even know that they make it anymore. It's kind of just like a heavy, bulky kind of. It just the quality level on this compared to um, all of the other props listed just doesn't seem as high. And I mean, it really shows. I mean, considering the difference between you know the Dow 6045 try and the Cyclone 6040C is more than two minutes. This prop is something I'm not going to be using going forward. I plan to get out uh, today and do some actual flying, uh, not just hover tests. And I'm going to be using a lot of these same props, especially the ones at the top that performed well. Um, I want to make sure that uh, the gate breaker, for instance, provides the performance that I need even at that time. And I want to see how the time is affected by um, higher thrust situations, higher throttle situations rather. All right, guys, there's the final numbers. Um, I hope this helps you pick your next six inch prop. If I made any mistakes or you have any critiques, uh, let me know in the comments because I plan on doing more of these videos. Uh, they were helpful for me. I hope they're helpful for you. And uh, if you like videos about drone stuff in general, uh, please subscribe and uh, share this with your friends. Thanks for watching.